Can you drive a car on that glass? You can. In really? fact, oh, yeah. when we first opened the store, they parked a car on top of it and it just freaked me out completely. Yeah. Hey folks, welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. It's the summertime and that means today's podcast is brought to you by Butcher Box. Butcher Box is the perfect service for the summer because summer means grilling and grilling means meats. And this summer, you can add some power players to your grilling lineup with ButcherBox. It's the subscription service that delivers high-quality meat and seafood right to your doorstep. You can choose from a carefully curated selection of 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood, and more. Uh, I love me some ribeyes. And although it's the summertime and I should be grilling them outside, I like to go with the reverse sear. I put them in the oven, a 240 oven. Uh, actually, I use my my toaster oven because it's the right size for me and my wife. Toaster oven, 240, about 30 to 40 minutes till I get to a 130 internal temperature. And then I sear it in the cast iron with some garlic, butter, and a sprig of rosemary. It is bomb. And then when I get that ground beef from Butcher Box. I blend up onions in the blender. You got to blend them because it like really unlocks that juice. And then it's just meat, onion, salt, pepper. And I go with the smash burger, mustard grilled on one side. It is the jam. And when I've got butcher box coming every month, I know I'm going to have meat in the freezer and ready to go. I just take it out, lay it on my granite countertop. And in about an hour or two, it is room temperature and good to go. Eat. Butcher Box meat has no antibiotics or added hormones. It's packed fresh and shipped frozen for convenience. So you can save time on your next grocery store trip. You can customize your own box. You can go with one of theirs. Either way, you get exactly what you want. And it's an unbeatable value at less than six bucks a meal on average. So get summer sizzling with this special Butcher Box deal for Smoke and Tire listeners. Free bacon for the life of your membership, plus 10 bucks off. You can sign up today at butcherbox.com slash tire, and then use code tire to get a pack of free bacon in every box for the life of your membership, plus 10 bucks off your first order. Butcherbox.com slash tire, and then code tire to get a pack of free bacon in every box for the life of your membership, plus 10 bucks off on the first order. So go to butcherbox.com slash tire and use code tire to claim this deal. Right? Right. Also brought to you today in part by Upside. Now look, from cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts, and sometimes it really hurts. That's why I started using Upside. It's an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. Upside is super easy to use. You can just pull up the app. It tells you where uh, the, the gas stations, the restaurants are that will accept you and what the deal is that it's uh, that it's given you. You know what you're getting into ahead of time. And with all the cash back uh, I'm saving, I can buy more gas for my sports cars. Actually, who's kidding? I can just give it all to Donnie. That's Donnie just gets all my money right yeah. now. So to get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Use promo code SMOKING and get five Five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside, and you can cash out any time into your bank account, PayPal, or you can get an e-gift card for Amazon or other brands. So download the free Upside app and use promo code SMOKING to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code SMOKING. 
Also brought to you today by Berryman Products. Look, here at Westside Collector Car Storage, where our studio is, we keep cars in long-term storage. And something that's important, not just keep their battery alive, not just keep their tires inflated, but keeping their fuel stabilized so these cars will run like clockwork when we go to start them up again. That's why we're using the Berryman Four-Step Professional Air and Fuel System Maintenance Kit. It cleans all major intake and fuel system components in all fuel-injected gas-powered vehicles, including modern direct-injected and turbocharged engines. Berryman Four-Step Air and Fuel Maintenance Kit improves hard starting, rough idle, poor fuel economy, power, and overall drivability, and the proprietary universal application system works with both air intake and manifold vacuum injection systems. It's safe on catalytic converters and oxygen sensors. Berryman products are all American made since 1918 and Berryman is available at your favorite automotive retailer or auto parts store. Just go to BerrymanProducts.com to learn more. All right, uh, today Zach and I are on the road, but not too far away. We've been invited up to Porsche Santa Clarita, where they are working on the Porsche Restoration Challenge, an interesting competition between dealers to see who can do the best Porsche restoration. The uh, winners will be revealed at Pebble Beach this year at a special event. And uh, our pal Bo Bachman is uh, joining us. He's talking about the uh, the state of the car buying and selling business, which of course is really interesting right now. We're also talking about other interesting things to do with the Ford Lightning. And uh, we've also got updates to my own cars, updates to the disaster in Malibu and more. It's half crew show, half Bo Bachman from the Porsche Santa Clarita Cars and Coffee on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Hey everybody, Zach here. Just a quick note before we get into this amazing show with Bo Bachman at the Santa Clarita Porsche dealership. We had a small audio glitch that was occurring for the first 10 minutes. There was a little bit of static and ticking that we couldn't hear in the headphones, but thankfully the live audience alerted us too, and then we were able to solve it for the remainder of the show. So if you hear that, it's not your speakers, it's not your headphones, and yes, we are aware of the problem, and it does get solved. So thank you for listening. Now enjoy this episode. Sounds what good. up? What up? What up? What up? Welcome to Porsche Santa Clarita. Porsche Santa Clarita. Where they have invited us for money <laughs> to come <laughs> podcast at their, uh, at their beautiful showroom. And it is a beautiful showroom. Like an actor, like, I'm really happy to be in this movie. This ninth Mighty Ducks is really Shaq what I'm expecting. only drives Buick. No, that's really unfair. We're, I'm being really disingenuous. This is actually no, extremely funny. cool. There's, a, there's glass in the floor over there. I'm going to talk to Bo want, about that. As someone about who that? knows about overpriced glass. Because I have installed some overpriced glass. Not as overpriced. That is I guarantee really cool. you it's not as overpriced okay. as, that, as that. That is going to be an expensive piece of floor. Worth it. Worth it. I bet it's like inch and a half oh, thick. Sure. So you can look down through the floor at a Porsche 917, which is pretty awesome. It's incredible. It's in the yeah. middle of the showroom. And you look down, it's like, oh, there's a race car. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know, excavation panels are some of my favorite, like, things. Like, when you go to a museum and it's like, here was, here was before. You're looking okay. into like an archaeological right. dig through the floor. One of my favorite. Like the Corvette Museum? Well, one of my favorite <laughs> films that predicted the future, Demolition Man, has that in the, in the museum, the Hall of Violence, uh, where they, they, they have a floor uh, with its clear and you look down below at what was there before the big quake, the big earthquake. That's, that's how they, the city used to That's how like. they, yeah, before it became San Angeles, the San Diego, Los Angeles, Santa Barbara Metroplex, as it were. Later today, I will be bidding. When did this movie come out? 1996. 1996. 1996, and it predicted the future in many ways. True. The Schwarzenegger Presidential Library, which got, it got pretty close. Got close. Uh, the fast food wars, the increasing uh, inequality, income inequality, uh, semi autonomous cars, the outlawing of old cars. Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's I think a, we could get to the foam safety system for cars too. Foam, yeah. For people that don't, the car turned into it, a like, As you crash, yeah, the whole car like fills with foam that hardens immediately. Yeah, pretty rad. It's actually not a, not a terrible idea. It's true. You it, wouldn't be able. To, it'd be hard to get out after that happened. Yeah, you would. You would die of suffocation certainly. If yeah. There. Yeah, or it would be a problem. Car caught fire. Yeah, it'd be bad. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're. Yeah. It's a, it's a short sighted solution. Pros and cons to everything. Yeah. Um, before we get to, uh, we're here today because. Um, 
Porsche Santa Clarina is taking part in this in this Porsche restoration challenge, which yes. maybe you can actually see the car behind me. It's uh, it's lime green, and uh, and it's a neat a neat contest between different uh, shops and dealers uh, to 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 build these these custom Porsches. Um, and our friend Bo's going to talk to us about that, as well as talk to us about um, the the car business right now because. A lot of people are asking us car business questions. Yeah, well, it's changing like week to week. Right. Um, as well as uh, we're going to talk lightning because Bo has some interesting ideas for the for the Ford Lightning. Um, but real quick, two two things that are uh, that have come up from the last show: how to turn off the radio in the BMW. We uh-huh. talked about this, and a bunch of people uh, gave us suggestions. One of which actually works. If you power off the car and you then hold down the power, the volume button on the radio for three seconds, that will turn it off. Okay. Or you found a menu yep. that will turn it off once you open the door like a regular car. Right. You can set it to be a regular car. Yeah. yeah. How, how deep in the menus was it? I mean, it was like four layers, but it was just, you know, car settings, vehicle settings, door thing. I just, yeah. I didn't find it before we did the review. Right. But I added a lower third in our video uh, podcast. Like, hey, we figured this out. So it's, it is possible. It's possible to make it to a, turn it into a normal turn car. Turn into a regular yeah, car. That's you know. good. And you can hold the thing down. Like, there's ways around it. Um, the other thing was we were wondering. It's still a strange default. I want, I still want to hear from the engineer, like, why that decision was made. Yeah. But. Like, I could see if making I, it do the thing it normally does was buried four menus deep. But say you pull up in a turnout you want to get out and dance in the moonlight with your sweet with your sweetheart that yeah. way it keeps playing it doesn't shut down the mood it's done. that's the only thing there's I can no think other of re- that's a that's a terrible reason um <laughs> love is a weird reason for everything right? right the other thing was we wanted to know why it could take so long to do a hard update on a car like the mach e because i have to take my car in uh for an update that will take two days mm-hmm. the blue cruise update so um, uh, we got, I got a few answers in, uh, in addition to the, um, the other question about the BMW. Oh no. We, um, we, uh, were wondering why it was taking so long to update the Maki. e They have to do this update. It's going to take two days and we were wondering why we got a lot of answers from people. Um, and I'm going to read one in particular because I think it was the best like articulated um, from Thomas Hall on Instagram, who is an automation engineer and uh, wanted to help answer the question. Uh, I believe the hardwire connection at the dealer would have to be through the OBD port, which has a max transfer rate of 10 megabytes per second, which for the amount of data that we have to move in the year 2022 is very slow. Uh, this coupled with the automotive industry using old style processing nodes. Um, although most ADAS systems run on much newer chips, uh, this causes the long update time. For example, let's say the update file is 15 gigabytes. If it maxes out the connection speed, that would be three hours and 20 minutes just to transfer. And first it would have to clear all its own memory and check for errors. So basically the OBD port is just really old school and slow. Wow, it's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I that, didn't think they'd have to plug into that port. I figured there would be an Ethernet hole somewhere where you could Wi-Fi it, but I, I, maybe it Yeah, well, if it was Wi-Fi, I could do it over the air because right, I, I point, could do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, no, you have to plug it in, and that's and that's why. So thank you for... Okay, for cool. every, every And other people who wrote in um, had similar versions of, of that answer. So Interesting. People were helpful in that one. But yeah, it's the bottom line is... It's not, it's designed, that OBD port is designed for the amount of data that your M3 processes, right. you know, that cars from 1996 and a newer were processing. In 2022, that's a ton of data that yeah. it needs to download uh, through, a, through a crappy connection. Yeah, it used to just tell you, like, uh, your cat is hot. Yeah, yeah. Or your yeah. oil is low. Yeah. And it's just a simple sensor. Yeah. And now, now it's like... Now it's a whole can thing. Can you read all the cars around you? Yeah. That's, that's and, a lot. And so if it's three hours for 15 gigs, like, that's... that's and, and, and what they told me at the dealer were, there's multiple modules that need to be updated to run Blue Cruise. So there's, you know, it's a variety of cameras and sensors and blah, 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 blah. So they have to do each one 
and it's just wow. And yeah. how long does it take t- for total download time? Was it two days? It's two days to update the software. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. It's a, it's ridiculous. I, it's, it seems like such a waste of time. <laughs> I mean, it seems like if I were building a car that could potentially need these types of updates, I would include a faster port somewhere in the car. But then that'll add. I mean, we were we were talking to Nikita, you yeah. know, on the last show. Uh, he was a car designer. He said you're little. You're arguing for pennies on like yeah. uh, pennies cost on a bumper. So yeah, imagine but think about how much your dealer time is. If you if it costs you, if this dealer has to dedicate a tech, it's fifty point. bucks an hour, or seventy five bucks an hour to doing this. But I don't. They don't sit there. They hit go. Probably, but it's, it's in a bay. It is in a bay. You know, it's you're taking up, taking space, up right? space at a service bay. Yeah. It might require a technician. You know, how many, I don't know how many this guy can do at once. It might only be one or two computers at the dealer that can do it. So right. you're, you are taking up those. It might be the kind of thing that is literally penny smart and dollar foolish. Maybe, or they have done all the math far further out than Maybe. us. And they're like, well, we make $2 more than the other, the easy yeah. way. They probably, yeah. they probably have done this math. I would think, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, it's so, funny. So OBD3 so, yeah, will be right? a big uh, step forward. Right. And uh, story item number three, this one just came in. Um, it seems that, because uh, we talked about the possible concession in Malibu, possibly giving up uh, on enforcing this parking lot thing. Right. Just came in today. Uh, this has been posted on uh, their Instagram. Beginning... Tomorrow, Sunday the 24th, Malibu Village Shopping Center parking lot will be valet only. Whoa. From 7 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Valet is free for customers of Malibu businesses. Uh, I texted Spike. I texted this to Spike. And he said, he just said, he, he echoed my thoughts exactly. How do you park one million cars in two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> he said, holy shit, that's going to be a disaster. And I completely agree. I think it's going to be a total disaster. Yeah. But, but I applaud them for getting creative. I mean, if they want to raise their revenue, that's yeah. a way to do it. And yeah. Like if, but now how do they define a customer? So if you go to Bill's and you get a coffee, yeah. are you then not a customer? I mean, I feel like I already have the loophole with the EV. I mean, right, but for everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I imagine if you're going to go, like, they cannot say, you know, unless they're literally going to discriminate by car and go, because you have a sports car, you may not park here. Now, I think there's a lot of people, a lot of folks who have a car that they would bring to a Cars and Coffee event they don't want randoms valeting that, those yeah. types of cars. Of course. And so I think, I actually think that may be a, a deterrent. I do. This may be a successful deterrent. It might be a successful deterrent. I, I think it's going to be incredibly annoying for the owners of the parking lot. It's and going for to cause customers. the largest traffic jam. The it's, line for it's valet. It's going to be enormous. Oh my it's God. It's going to be enormous. It's going to be a huge problem. It's going to be massively inconvenient. And I bet the shoppers won't even want it. I bet the shoppers will lose their minds. Because they don't, I don't, yeah. if you have a giant parking lot, you don't want to, you don't want to valet. You don't, who wants to, who wants to, who wants to valet for shopping? Nobody, but in LA, when I first moved here, I remember I pulled up to a, like a cheap restaurant next to a 7-Eleven and they both had valet and I was yeah. like, what, what, where am I? What yeah. planet is this? This is, it's the solution to the LA pro, uh, parking problem. They just go, we'll take your car. Let us figure out where to park it on the yeah. street while you go inside and, you know, get a sweater or something I mean, like that. I mean, it's literally going back to like. 1994, clueless. Why do I need to learn how to parallel park right. everywhere you go has valet? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you've been to restaurants where you pull up, you give it to the valet, and he parks it two feet to your left. I know. Like, I could have done that. I hate, I, I hate valet. Uh, and one of the things that I do when I have either, either my own, and basically any car except the Mach-E, is I say, here's $20. Where can I park this? Just, just point, and I will park it there. Thank you. Have, and the nicer the car, the more I'm willing to spend. You right. know, if I, if I want to ball out and go red car to dinner, there's going to be a few 20s involved in that. But trust me, I will be parking. Yeah, this you're like, you're not touching this. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, well, that'll so be a fun that's thing gonna to be, watch. That's going to be, I want to go and sit on the side of the road and just watch that shit show. Yeah. I, I'm ready. I'm going to bicycle up there. Yeah, just go get a bagel and <laughs> yeah. just watch and see what happens. I, I mean, but what I, I really like... You know, I feel bad for, for Bill because they're basically just wrecking his business. 
Um, I'm not going to say the number, but he told me how much money, how much less money he made this year from last year based on this. And it's in the six figures. Really? His reduction from one year to the next is in the from six figures. From blocking the parking lot. From blocking the parking lot. Jeez. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. So it's like, I mean, yeah, I guess I can understand why you'd want to do it if your customers are bitching to the city council and the city council's bitching to you. And if it's like people who want to shop at like, you know, the clothing store or whatever. Yeah. But like people also want to go to the restaurants. Right. People like people patronize the restaurants. Especially at seven o'clock in the morning. No one's yeah. buying a sweater. The store's not open. Yeah. That's really so silly. I, if they, you know, if they did it starting at 10, like, all right, I get it, you know, but it does it, to start this kind of stuff three hours before stores open is extremely annoying and stupid. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, but I applaud their creativity. I think that is, I think that is, uh, that's creative. And I think they're going to spend a lot of money and create a total disaster. But I applaud their I feel like this is like Princess Bride with the poison cups. And he's like, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> I will not put my poison cup in front of you. But you do not. <laughs> you're, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to try and do it. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the Malibu update. Fortunately, the, looks like the Porsche Santa Clarita Cars and Coffee is more than happy to have everybody. Yeah. What is it normally the first Saturday of the month? First Saturday of the month. Normally the first Saturday of the month. Uh, they start at nine, I think, yeah. normally in the first Saturday of the month. And it, they say it gets packed every, every time within like 10 minutes. And actually, you know, sir, something I like about a, about a Cars and Coffee in general, if you're going to have a Cars and Coffee, I would be more likely to attend your Cars and Coffee if it is somewhere that is somewhat adjacent to some nice roads. I don't just want to get on the 405 or just any freeway and drive into the city somewhere and then pull off and go to a parking lot and then get back on the 405 after. Like, that sucks. I don't want to do that. That's why I stopped going to the Orange County Cars and Coffees. But here in Santa Clarita, there are good roads. Like, right, uh, like a couple more exits off the, up the freeway. I need, I need to be able to, like, go for a nice little cruise either before or afterwards. So, yeah. it's good up here. There's yeah, definitely. Canyon Roads. Yeah. Some of our favorite roads. Oh, shit. I just remembered. So, I went to uh, Good Vibes yesterday up in the Angeles Forest at Newcomb's Ranch every Friday. And I always go up, not the main way, uh, up Angeles Crest Highway. Right. I don't like to go all the way up there because the police are always at the bottom half of yes, Angeles Crest Highway. Always. You just don't drive that section. Stinks. Or drive the speed limit. Yeah. I go up the other way that we like to go. Mm-hmm. And the road that we take up there is kind of bumpy and not in great condition. They're paving it. And so I got halfway up. They're paving it? And it said, <sighs> road closed for work. And I got to where the closure was. And there was a crew there, and they are paving it. That is so great. And I was on the motorcycle, because I have a free motorcycle right now, the Triumph 900 Tiger that my friend Gibran left me. He moved out of town. He said, I can't take my motorcycle with me, but if I leave it with you, you could ride it whenever you want. Consider it your motorcycle. And so I was like, great. So I've really been riding it a lot, (laughs) and it's awesome. Nice. But I got to the construction, and they had already paved the... Uh, down the left side, the side where you would drive on, on it, it, facing up the hill, it was the left side. So the down, oh, the downhill side right. of the road, and they were working on the uphill side of the road. And there's some guys on the, with a steamroller, and and they saw me. I'm by myself. I'm on a motorcycle, and I was like, oh guys, like I didn't know about this paving. I was like, how 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 long is your work section? Because the whole road was closed. And they were like, it's all the way from here to the, to the top. And I was like, oh, man. And I was like, look, there's no cell service up here. I was supposed to meet some friends on the other side. Like, I didn't know about this. Like, like, like I got dirt tires. I, I can make it. Well, it doesn't. It has pavement know, tires. Kinda, but I was like. They're like cyclocross. I was whatever. like, can I like, is there any way like I could sneak through? And the guy goes, you know what? He goes, if you stay on the left side. And you, you go slow and you're careful and there's going to be some trucks coming downhill. So you got to watch out. For, you know, there's trucks going back and forth okay. with the asphalt. And he goes, you, you can go, you know, be careful. Nice. And he goes, if when you get to the, the, the main crew and they're going to stop you and wonder what the hell you're doing, tell them you're here. <laughs> you're here to do a structural inspection on the dam. And I was like, 
really? And he was like, yeah, it's cool. And I was like, <laughs> awesome. So I, I rode up and I got to the crew and the guy gave me the, the one of these. So what are you doing? I go, hey man, here to uh, instructional inspector, here to do uh, something on the dam. I, like I, 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 I did the accent. I did the, I did the, the, <laughs> I believe you. through the helmet, you know, Hey man, you know, here working today. I'm here to work doing That's the structural. Your impression of someone, an engineer on the dam is funny. I did. You know, I was, my impression was of the, the super at my job site. I basically did a, I pulled, gotcha. I did a Rick. Yeah. Remember so Rick yeah, with yeah. the slicked hair? I did him. You got and you, but some, somehow that accent makes you really seem like you are there to work on a dam. You'd be a you great know? politician. You were, you were one of the people. Hey man, <laughs> hey man, working today. Here to work on the dam. And the guy just goes, all right, bro. And just waves me by. That's amazing. And then I kept going. And, and, and that crew was only, was the, the bottom half uh, of the road. And so then it was just me. Perfect tarmac. And perfect tarmac. The whole, and I wasn't going quick because I thought maybe a car would come down, like a, a work truck. And I wasn't trying to take advantage. But I think I might have been the first civilian to ride uh, the brand new tarmac on yeah. this road. It is glass smooth. It is amazing. I bet. It was, I'm like, That's so the whole cool. time I'm going up going, oh, this is fucking you great. You got fresh tracks. This is fucking great. Wow. Yeah. And there was, and after that one guy, there was nobody else. I mean, because for people listening, like this was the road when we tested cars, we would usually only drive cars with mag ride. Yeah. Or similarly comfortable because it was testing their suspension because every two feet there was sealant on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. It was bumpy. Yeah, it was very bumpy. So they're, very loud. They're, so they're making it like Angeles Forest Highway, which is really smooth. Which is, so it's gonna be it's gonna be an incredible drive. That's great. Now this if you and this road was big and fast. Yeah. Even despite the bumps, this is a fast road. Now it's going to be really fast. With good camber. That's a good road. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't push my luck. I didn't go back down that way. What's funny to me is that the guy at the bottom, he's like, don't tell them Steve said it's okay. He's like, I don't have the clout. <laughs> yeah. But if you tell them you're a dam inspector, you can get away with anything. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what has that guy gotten away with up there? He knows. Well, yeah. And an inspector, like, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't have anything. It's not no, like I was wearing a vest yeah. or anything like that. Like, all you need is a phone. That's right. You know? Like, so, yeah. You pull up, <laughs> somebody fucked up something up here and I got to go check it out. Shout out to that guy. You know, you know who you are. That's guy, great. guy who's just like, yeah, it's cool. Whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> if I was in a car, it never would have flown. It never would, never would have happened. It's okay. I'm the limo driver. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you did. <laughs> um, but I think, uh, good vibes was like uh, a little quieter. I think possibly because of that. Yeah. That. Anyone else would have gotten to that closure and go, ugh. Fuck, because there's no way around. Right, that's an hour detour. You have to go. Yeah, it was a fully an extra an extra hour. Yeah. yeah, that the ride back down. I rode all the way down Angeles Crest to the bottom, mm -hmm. and then across the city to the shop. It was an hour and forty minutes, and I was wiped after that. It was hot. I mean, I was wearing like my mesh jacket, so it was better than. But but it was like lane splitting the whole way down the freeway afterwards. It was exhausting. Wow. Even on a nice bike, I was wiped yeah yeah it's, so. it's a lot of like there's a lot more stimulation on motorcycle in terms of noise yeah heat all those things like yeah. it, if people we had a lot of people commenting after our last discussion about assisted driving like they are more relaxed at the end of a trip if they use radar crews or sure. the systems right so motorcycles going the other way you take away the windshield the doors everything else it's a more exhausting experience yeah yeah super and you're fighting you know you fight wind to a certain degree like this has a windshield but i right. still have to hold yeah, you get on. hit with a b in the neck <laughs> still gotta hold on and i understand those people's arguments about being more relaxed with radar crews like i use radar crews mm -hmm. and i am more relaxed and also evs are more relaxing like yeah like i wonder um you know when people if they're using those types of systems, if it's in a Tesla or in a, 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 a Mach-E or in a Lightning or whatever, um, how much of that relaxation is from the uh, ADAS system and how much of it is from being in an electric in vehicle that vehicle, doesn't right. vibrate? That know. was a big thing with newer planes. When they, I don't remember right. which generation, but a big thing was passenger fatigue upon arrival went down a lot. Also, like private jets the, or commercial jets. The 787 jets. Uh, Dreamliner was like the first one to, yeah. to get really get quieter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Bo, you want to come down and join us, buddy? Everything Welcome. good? Welcome. Thank you. Well, I sh Thank you should you. welcome us, I guess, because we're in your shop. Yeah, welcome to our little it's boat nice here. here. It's cool, nice isn't and, it? Nice in here. Yeah, it's I want to talk to you about that glass on your floor over there. 
Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's some well, pricey glass, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> can you drive a car on that glass? You can. In really? fact, oh, yeah. when we first opened the store, they parked a car on top of it, and it just freaked me out yeah. completely. Now, it's totally set. It can handle it, no problem, but I don't know. How thick is it? It's, it's about... The oh, is that all? Oh, it's... So he, 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 Bo just made a two, about two-inch... Yeah, two sorry, I forget we're on a uh, podcast we're, we're here. Both. Yeah, we're both. <laughs> um, but, I don't know my units uh, of measurement. It's an awesome piece of, uh, of floor. It's, it's really cool. It was, That's money we, well spent. We, had a, we, we have an experiential designer. His name's Eddie Sato. He's been a dear friend. He helped us design kind of the James Bond, Aston Martin themed. Did he do the vault yeah, at the, the other v- place? The, the vault. Uh-huh. So he helped us uh, with that. So we were talking about Porsche. He's been a huge Porsche fan for years. He's driven one like for the last 20 years. And uh, we have this downstairs area that's just been a parking garage. And we're trying to figure out something you know, cooler to do with it. We don't quite need all the space. And we thought, why not create kind of a museum type display and, and bring in some of the best elements. So his thought was, that's great, but it's going to be hidden. Yeah. Why don't we expose it and build in this glass floor? Genius. And uh, exactly. Like, I'm really like, that's freaking brilliant. It's cool. And it's yeah. lit well. And the car you have down there right uh, mm-hmm. down there right now is all white. Which normally, yes. if you, for me, if you put a car outside at noon, it doesn't look great. Like, all the shape goes away. Yeah. But the way you've lit it, you see nothing but the curve of the car yes. from, like, a, a perspective that almost nobody ever gets to see. Yes. And it's so a really 962 cool. yeah. also. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's not like it's like, oh, it's a white. It's not an everyday. It's not a white yeah. Carrera. It's a 962. True. Which, it's, which uh, when you view, viewing that car from directly above is and having it on the turntable yeah oh. that's like the best angle for that for that type of car those long yes. you know group c race cars are look good from up top absolutely that's so a, that's, that's a, a real neat engineering and, and that was you know you know porsche is pretty strict about their designs you know they they want to make sure they've got consistency in the showrooms and all that kind of thing they kind of got a reputation for uh being somewhat difficult to yeah. deal with during the yeah. building process i found it the opposite i found that you know as much as they want to keep things porsche which i appreciate uh they also encourage the creativity so like well, having a glass floor like, well, i see what you want but i'd like like to go far beyond that. Yeah, so it like, probably it, doesn't happen that often. Well, uh, uh, but to their credit, they appreciated that, and um, that's I think what helped us get the franchise. Uh, and that's like one of the you know, there's no other Porsche dealership with a glass floor in it, you know, and and yeah, and, cool. and we're the first one actually in the world that has uh, a built-in museum, and and we've got uh, you know a lot of friends that uh, we have uh, show their cars off, and it's just. It's a, it's a great place, and it's a meeting place for Porsche clubs. We have events like today, like Cars and Coffee. We've got a you know, whole meeting area down there. So It's cool, and yeah. it's, I'm, I'm trying to think about what I, ra- what I appreciate seeing a car from above or seeing a car from below. Like, yeah. I'm wondering like, if it might just, if what, what is the more interesting visual perspective, getting to look up you know, <laughs> at the underside of a GT3 or a race car from, from below. Versus looking down from above. I would you say can, that you from can't above do that. most of the time, because from below, a <laughs> race car is going to have like a flat belly pan. That's yeah. true. So you may just see a wall of plastic or carbon. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 Touche, Zach. Touche. He, he, so, he, I mean, got, he got But you on there. an old race car, you can see how things work, and that is interesting. Yeah. So yeah. what's up with this yeah. restoration challenge thing? How so, did you get involved in this? Well, we did it last year, and you know, it's we, for dealers. We, this is for dealers. So they basically put out the challenge to all Porsche dealers, uh, whether they're classic certified or not, and um, basically it said, "Do what you want, and we're going to grade you." And they have a you know whole series of contests uh, throughout the country, and then ultimately they they meet for the the grand prize. So, what's the we, grand prize? You know, a trophy. So, but, but like, bragging this is, rights, this is you expensive. know. I think they give you like an allocation or something like that. So they make it real. You get but, something. But for this it. is like like building a a, a full custom air cooled car, like yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, takes up one of your bays. It takes up a, a, a guy or two for a long period of time. Yeah. And so why why invest? What is what is the what is the the other side of? Well, it's it, it's. First of all, this is what we do. So it's what I love. It's what I have fun with. And this is, you know, this is my version of fun. I don't care about sports or doing anything else. That's uh, what most people do. So this is literally my enjoyment. And I, I love what I do and I love work. Uh, but we've got the team already here. And it's actually been great business for us as well. 
Um, in fact, uh, our service manager earlier was pointing out all the cars that are in the shop now because of the restoration challenge uh, that we did last year. Oh, okay. In fact, this car right here was at another shop, uh, and it's a guy that our, our service manager, Armin, has known for years, uh, and he's been very unhappy. He hasn't been able to get it out. In fact, he, he, he said he hired an investigator to find his car because it was like, oh, where no. did it go? Uh, and said, well, Armin, I didn't know you guys were doing restorations up there. And then I saw what you did on the restoration challenge, and I'm bringing my car to you. So, oh, so there is, there's a good marketing. Oh, value. absolutely. Oh, yeah. Do you own the car? This car, yes. Okay. Yeah. So once you are done... Uh, quote competing with it can yeah. then can you then put it on the showroom floor and sell it or oh yeah okay cool I'm gonna, but I'm gonna drive it I'm gonna okay. have some fun with it it's a it's a it's a, it's a safari we're actually I see the wheels a, I see the wheels and tires we're doing a safari a, a Targa safari yeah. yeah can we pull back for a second what are the yeah. requirements rules that are, you know that the ch cars are graded on at the end of this contest so they have this whole like checklist of things that involve uh, you know, every aspect of the car and things like that. And you get certain points for certain things, like even putting in a classic radio, for example, you get points for and things like that. But we're not, I don't know, we don't play to the points and we don't play to the, to the contest, uh, so to speak. Like to me, uh, it's a win when people are blown away and love the car and talk about the car. That's winning to me, not necessarily getting the trophy. Because um, what we're, not, we're doing is not really a restoration. I mean, we're going yeah, you're back modifying. And, and we're, you're. we're building, and, and this is what we, we did the last time because we had a 1955 Speedster and it didn't have the original engine. So it never would have been you know, restored back to a perfect car. So we took the tact and the, the, the idea of if Galpin had a Porsche dealership in 1955 and we were going to Galpinize a Speedster, what would we do? So that's kind of the... the, the idea and, and the inspiration that it came from. So this was no different. This was, okay, it's 1974. Uh, we're galping. We're really into off-roading, which we were in 1974. We were in Baja and doing, you know, racing and that kind of stuff. What would we do? And that was the inspiration behind this was reimagining ourselves as having Porsche in 1974 and we're going to do the ultimate build. So we're going to turn this 911 into a safari just like they were doing in East Africa at the time and uh, go with something that's really kind of wild and out there, you know, something different. And yeah, not, this, not the paint job is trippy. It's, it's going to, yeah, it's going to freak some people out. It's cool. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a fan of it. So it's, thank I've you. I've seen... Um, I've seen uh, a cl couple classic 911s that do have a paint job similar to what you're doing. Yeah. It was available somewhere. Like some someone offered a paint scheme kind of like this in the kind of, 70s, but, but right? not exactly. You know it's, the one I'm, you know what I'm talking about, right? The one that said like 911 and it was like oh, extended yeah, yeah, yeah. out. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Mm. It might have been early 80s, uh, but, it, but I, it, I I do remember It was that. a similar kind of vibe. It, yeah. It's it's got a similar vibe, but this is going to be far more obnoxious. Well, it's yeah, green. I like it. Yeah, it's it's, it's really it's bright green. green. It's really green. And it also has bright yellow, bright orange, and bright red with yeah, it, and it's white. Aggressive. It's it's gonna be. Uh, it, it, it's not subtle. Yeah. So no. is that that's yeah. the motor on the stand there? It is. What is the engine? It's a three liter. It's a um, no. It's not the three liter. It's the is it the two seven that's in there now? Because we're Maybe. we're actually making some modifications For the record, to that Bo as well. Just asked us. He looked yeah, at me. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> well, you put me on the spot like that. You know, we're only interviewing at my garage uh, here on the probably. car that we're working on. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, and literally, know, we were just having a, that it's conversation. It's a 74, you said? It's a 74. Yeah, uh, 27 sounds right. I think right. it's the 27. That sounds right. Okay. As soon as so you put that other thought in my head, confusing my very <laughs> simple mind. So small that's the thing engine? about Porsche. You know, I haven't been into Porsches my whole life. I grew up as a Ford guy. Porsches were forbidden fruit. Yeah. And uh, now that I've become a complete Porsche nerd and trying to get into it, what you realize is that it's trying to memorize a math book. Yeah. There, there's nothing sequential about the numbers. Yeah. Right. There's nothing yeah. like, so it's very easy to get confused and not for nothing, but we're working on a few cars. You know, it's not just one car. So uh, I get confused very easily. So um, uh, we're still figuring all this uh, fun Porsche lingo out. Yeah. Well, you're going to have, what, what's <laughs> going to have to happen with this car is you have to modify the engine because when yep. you put those big wheels and tires on it, it's a lot of rolling resistance. I know I've been there yep. and you need a hot rod engine to actually make it feel like yep. quick. Um, but it's a Targa, which is neat yeah. good for California. Absolutely. Um, 
Especially if you're not going to go air conditioning, which it, I don't see, and I don't think you're going to go air Man, conditioning. We don't right? really need air. And no, I see no you've extra got, weight. You've got the BFG tires. We do. Now, those are going to be great for the challenge because yes. they look mean. They, and not for nothing, this is the look right yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, No, they look mean. Yeah. I had those tires on mine. Mm -hmm. Here's what's going to happen. Right. Uh -huh. Once you drive on them for 100 miles, you're going to take them off. <laughs> And yeah. there's another tire, and I don't know if they're a sponsor, so I don't want to disparage. No, but, no, no, I, not but that that I know of. No, they look mean as hell with the with the ridge and the yeah. sides and stuff. Uh, the Falcon mm -hmm. Wild Peak yeah. performs on like trails and stuff just as well. Yeah. But it's way quieter oh, nice. on the road. So uh, those yeah. make a ton of noise. I can only imagine. And the Falcons are way quieter. So I'll you, check you that may out. end up you may end up they don't look as cool. Yeah. So for the challenge, you got the right tire. Perfect. That's really what I want to hear. Yeah, but if you're actually <laughs> gonna be driving the car around, you're gonna you're gonna hate those. Okay. Good good <laughs> advice. I like that. So I, I can't help but be honest. I saw the tires there. I was like, but, right one for the photos. <laughs> Wrong one to commute to work in. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The KO2? Is that what that is? Or KO3? Yeah, the KO2. Because the first gen, you had on the Raptor, and it was actually yeah. pretty quiet. Yeah, on the yeah. It was good. No, the, the twos are, are more for, like, sand. They've got mm. a lot of little, like, grabbers on them. Got it. Which just make a ton of noise. Got it. Like, mm. I thought, um, when, on my Safari, I thought when I had those tires that, like, my, my wheel hub was going. <laughs> I like, know it, too. It made so much noise. I was, I was like, <laughs> something is broken. And then I put my snow tires on to go to yeah. Mammoth which look a lot more like regular tires. They're mm -hmm. not as aggressive. And the sound was immediately gone. It's like, oh, oh, uh, the car is fine. It yes. was just these really, really loud tires. Same thing yeah. with some high Scary noises tires. on old cars kind of freak you out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like they ready, can mean a lot of things. Ready for something to fall off. Yes. Like, oh. And, I'm and paranoid these days. I don't know what's right? going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that'll, that thing will be, that'll be fun for you to cruise It's going to be it. fun. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's why we, do, you know, do these two. It's, uh, it, it's funny. Our, our, our service uh, manager, uh, Armin, and uh, our technician, Nick, were just thanking me. You know, same thing. Like, thank you that we get to do this yeah. at our job. So everyone's really enthusiastic about it. And uh, the whole team is getting uh, into it. And, you know, last time we did the restoration challenge, we had everybody come out to uh, the Porsche, uh, you know, uh, driving uh, Experience Center, and uh, this year we're going up to Pebble Beach. Oh, you and are? And do the big reveal uh, up there, so at, at what, taking at the what crew. event? Do you have your own uh, event? Porsche's got their, uh, they're, they're doing the event. Oh, with so all, it's all the contestants? Yes, How exactly. many well, entries are there, do you think? There's a lot this year. Um, um, it seemed to be like 70 or 80, do you know? Is it there have, somewhere? Uh, the list of participating dealers here, I would estimate, is 30 to 40. Oh, wow. It, it, it seemed like it was a lot more than last okay. year, though. Well, yeah. it, maybe it started off a lot bigger and then some dropped out or something. Wow. But cool. last year, it was. It seemed to be about that about that number last year. Wow, that's going to be awesome. I wonder, what do you know what day yeah. it is, Pebble? It's Friday. What oh, day really? is that? The 19th? It's the same day as the quail. It is. Yeah. That's the only bummer. It's the, yeah. It's a conflict. So I got to get early to later, the quail. Is it later in the afternoon, maybe? Can, it's I, go, a can I go to both? Because I'm going to be at the quail all day. I want to go to. Are you both. Going, well, I'm yeah. going to go early to the quail yeah. and get there a little bit early, and then um, and then take off from well, there. I, so I you can. Want, yeah. I kind of want to check it out. Yeah, yeah. you got to Mrs. Doubtfire it and go back and forth between two events, right? Yes, I got you got a, a helicopter. You know, got that the helicopter go, at the quail. Do you have the a guy, the, guy, the quail guy's got the helicopter? Yeah, you know that guy. No, the I don't know Lord, that guy. Whatever his name oh, is. Oh yeah, the Lord. And if you're like a super boss, he'll chopper you to the <laughs> historics and back from the quail. That yeah. is, that that's Remember that's, that that's pretty boss I've right there. I've heard of it. I, I know it exists. He was awesome, actually. I, I'm really? blanking on his name right now, but I met him and he was the coolest. I Lord was like, Byron? Huh? I don't know. No, not <laughs> no, Byron. No. I forget his name, but he was some kind of a Lord something, some kind of noble. Yeah, that's pretty cool when you got Lord to your name. Oh, dude. Yeah. I think I would use that title. Yeah. Laura, like, um, <laughs> you know? Lord it over people. Lord, if I was oh, knighted by know. somebody, I would demand to be called Sir. Sir, yes. Yeah. Sir Lewis Hamilton. That's a good uh, goal to have. Yeah, it's not going to happen for us. Right. No, not so much. I mean, not until until we end up with the uh, you know the kingdom can't of you California. Get, you, you, can't get, you, can't you can't get Madonna. knighted if you're uh, if you're not a Brit. No. I mean, look in Los Angeles. I, I you want to call yourself a knight? You call yourself a fucking what knight if, out here. No one what cares. If you, that's true. No what if you got some British heritage? Does that count, or you got to actually be born in, in I England? Think How you does have this to be real British. I don't think. No, you can't. Yeah, I don't think. You need an accent. The whole thing. Yeah, except huh? from birth. Otherwise, Madonna couldn't get it, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. put it on for a bit. You can't Madonna. just marry Guy Ritchie, get the <laughs> accent, and then... And then bail with, yeah. your, with your knighthood, yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it would be for women. Oh, well. Um, so, wait, 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 we were before, uh, before we start recording, because uh, Galpin has a 
a, a, a studio rentals business. Yes. Where you rent like vehicles and and uh, and crew stuff yep. for movies, which is a it's a great business. It is. People need it. Nobody buys that stuff. Everybody rents it. You've been doing it for forty something yeah. years, forty five years now. And if you you go around LA and you see a movie shoot somewhere, it probably says Galpin Rentals somewhere on the on the trucker. So what is it called? Studio Galpin services? Studio Rentals. Galpin yeah. Studio Rentals, right? And so we were talking about the Ford Lightning. Because uh, we had one, and we were such a big fan of of using it to power our equipment and stuff in yeah. the field. And you mentioned that they're about to ban uh, diesel generators. Uh, well, for they're, film. they're banning everything that runs on those little gasoline engines. So they're really all, all dirty. the leaf they blowers, they're horrible. Converters. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, that's actually I'm I'm a hundred percent for that. Yeah. So now we've got to go to battery generators. Yeah. So what is the so. We, and we, we said, like, yeah, the Lightning makes a lot of sense. And you said you were buying a couple of them for the studio rental business. So we're just getting um, some in now because uh-huh. I, I was able to get a couple that they could use. Because to me, it's like such an amazing solution that you yeah. can actually tow the equipment to the site, power everything on the site, and then tow it out that night and just charge it. And uh, have you tried one yet in terms of, like, to see what you can run off the truck and for how long? Yeah, not yet. We're just getting to that stage yeah. now. So we're going to get it in and then try to uh, see all the potential uses for it. But I think it could be tremendous. I, Jim Farley would be so excited yes. to see that. I mean, he was super stoked that we ran our little podcast equipment off of it. <laughs> but, like, if you if you say, like, you can run one of those, you know, two million candle power giant lights off of off this thing for five or six hours i mean that's like that's a real benefit because it's silent also you don't need a you don't need a giant generator running off camera well and that's the thing too we're actually towing these generators yeah. to these sites yeah. to have them you know work from it now now the the tow is the generator yeah. so yeah i think jim's gonna dig it it's well, an interesting well, like opportunity and it actually yeah. may uh, it may make the directors and stuff lives easier because they don't yeah. need to have these loud things, you know, running. Exactly Silent. right. It's perfect. So we'll we'll see. We're going to take it around That's the different cool. studios and see uh, see what what they can figure out what to do with them as well. But you you said it was funny that like Hollywood doesn't understand it yet. They don't. <laughs> well, you know, just like funny. anything, they've done it the same way for yeah. so many years. It's easy. And at the same time, they're getting, you know, pressure from above saying we've got to go green. And, you know, we're all trying to do the same thing uh, and, uh, you know, not be hypocritical about it. So, you know, they've got to. In, in fact, that's what we're, um, you know, that's kind of our angle on now that we're renting equipment is everything that we're getting is is green and ecological. So, you know, uh, uh, recycled, uh, you know, plastics, uh, everything that we can do to, to be green and, you know, nothing that's gas powered or any of that, uh, going all battery. So it's, uh, are they going to have a commercial, like a box truck chassis yet? They, they uh, must have one come. Cause that yeah, seems they, like a pretty obvious, a no brainer, right? They're, Big they're torque, not on long a lot distance. Of things. You know, right now we just have the transit, which yeah. is fairly limited, you know, mileage wise, but it works like for a studio, uh, um, uh, it works perfect yeah. because they don't, oh, the they're electric, not running long the distance. Transits? Yeah, because it goes yeah, about yeah. 100 miles. Yeah. So not, you know, it's not great electric for running transit. all around the city. Did you guys see that story about Kylie Jenner recently? She was flying, taking a private jet from like Van Nuys to Camp oh. Rio. Like, like it literally like a 12-minute <laughs> flight. People yes. tracked it. And it brought up all this stuff of like, you're using a private jet to yeah. fly what would take a car 40 minutes. And I got to thinking like, <laughs> that's hilarious. it's so obnoxious so in so many ways. <laughs> well, But if you had an electric transit or electric sprinter that was built out like the super limo cars like yeah. kevin hart was known for traveling in a really nice sprinter instead of flying and taking these short helicopter yeah. rides by the so way like, it would be, really be terrible cool. if that was just to avoid traffic i think i'm hoping it was coming into van nuys for maintenance which would then make no, sense was, i think she was on the flight though oh that's terrible yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was she, hoping it'd be like something. I don't oh wanna, no, they I don't had to do it. News it if but it was, I'm, I, I, read I hope the story it. too, and I'm pretty sure she was on the. Oh, gee, well, yeah. maybe she was flying in for maintenance. I want to give her the benefit of the, the doubt. I don't know. I, you know okay, you shouldn't be taking. We shouldn't have to say take your. You can't take your private jet on a 15 minute flight. Yeah, right. 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 No, that that, that like, we shouldn't I think do. The electric transit, electric, you know, van, not just for cargo stuff, could be really cool for those kinds of things. Sure. Oh yeah. And they and and they have some. Uh, small electric aircraft as well that can fly for an hour, an hour and a half, 
Um, I don't think I'd want to be on that yet. It'll, yeah, it'll there get there. Our, our friend Alex Roy flew on one and said it was very interesting. Yeah, oh. yeah. He said it was it was a sh- it was a short flight, yeah. but uh, it was very interesting. I don't know if and I'm big on any experimental aircraft at this point in my life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. uh, I don't want to be the test pilot. Dude. I don't. I don't want any part yeah. of that either. My friend uh, just came to visit me and talked about getting his helicopter's license, and he showed me the helicopter he flies, and it's no. like that shit from Jaws. Oh <laughs> shit! Oh, like it's like a it's like a a, a, a fish. Bowl on two kayaks. But he's getting, like, like, why would he want a helicopter's license? Is that like his, his he main did, he's gig? He's bored and needs something fun. to do. Well, I just, I don't think that's like a part time gig, though. You know, a helicopter pilot, that's like serious. No, I know. Yeah. I think he just wants a thing to do. That or he's going to be running, I hope he running does it like units every day. secretly. I don't know. He could also be doing that. Well, we'll ask Randy you probably Lanier shouldn't be talking he about it then. Ah, he's all right. I'm not giving uh, his name. All right. Cool. We are going to have Randy Lanier on the podcast. You know him? The guy who no. the guy who was a rookie of the year in 86 at the Indy 500, and he ran his whole Indy team on weed smuggling. <laughs> he went to prison. <laughs> no, I didn't like know that. It was like the Whittington brothers and all this. It was a whole South Florida oh, weed hilarious. smuggling racing scene. He wrote a book. Wow. Uh, that's, that's coming out. That would be interesting. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll listen to that. I'll give you, I, have, sure. I have the book. I'll give it to you when I'm done. It's, oh, cool. It's crazy. It's, uh, oh, man. It's Oh, Jesus. I'm blanking on the title of the book now. Well, he's Randy he, will be on the podcast we're talking about. He can plug it then. That'll be good. It's a good book. I'm like halfway through it. It's awesome. It's a great read. Wow. I'm really into it. I mean, uh, racing, drug running. What's yeah. not to like? They went exactly. hand in hand for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I can yeah. only imagine. And he was racing a Porsche. He started, he won the SCCA runoffs in a, in a Speedster. Right on. 356 Speedster in 1982 or something. Jeez. Oh, well, that's he cool. A speedster he bought for $7,000. What was the, what was so, the team that ran two 935s that that's were? The that's the Whittington brothers. Whittington brothers. So they were mm-hmm. homies with this guy. And his own, the only sponsor on, on his car in the 80s was Whittington Brothers whatever, oh, RV geez. sales or something. And so these guys... And that the was guy how they that, wandered all right, the dough? Yeah. pharmaceuticals. So oh, yeah, because racing it wastes so much yeah. money. That's yeah. kind of a perfect launder because yeah. yeah. it's such a huge loss no yeah. matter what you do. So these guys, uh, the Whittington brothers, they won Le Mans overall from the GT class in a Porsche 935 wow. in 1979. <laughs> and Bruce That's Meyer funny. owns the car. It's oh, at, that car, it's yes. It's the car at Bruce's garage. Oh, yeah, he's shit, got the that's car. That's so cool. Yeah. And he's, you know, Bruce, every car Bruce has is like some amazing story. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, he he loves to talk about that they won Le Mans from the G, GT class. He won't mention how they paid for that effort. He <laughs> likes to see, keep his hands now clean. Now I know the dirty little now secret. Uncle B this likes is to good. Keep his hands yeah. Clean. But didn't he tell us a story of his friends like spoofed him and they yes. they pretended to be CIA agents, yes. FBI, and they showed up at Laguna Seca, like yes. towing your car because <laughs> they've got all this history. It's amazing. I didn't know that there was the whole story behind. Well, I, oh, I kind of. I vaguely just, remember there was a story behind it, but I didn't know. I yeah, didn't that's it. know that that was it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is yeah. a great story. Yeah, yeah. They got Bruce pretty good with that yeah, one. So, so you what a horrible feeling. Can you imagine? They're pulling your car yeah. away, and it oh just you know your dream car. And so, that, the, and the kid, the son of one of those guys, is that R. D. Whittington guy, who's the wires only guy. Have you seen that guy? No. He's got a TV show now that's called like Million Dollar Wheels or something, and oh, no he's kidding. like a broker. For like rappers to buy Bugattis oh, and stuff. Oh, that's and that's funny. the guy's kid. Uh, we should get that guy on the show. He's yeah, probably he got is, some stories. Is he, uh, is he out here? Is he he's in, in LA? Oh, right yeah, he's on. In LA. Oh, that would be funny. He, yeah. <laughs> they nominated him for an Emmy. I think really? He's yeah, for like best business show or something. Wow. <laughs> it's like best business show. What is I that? I think they call that's the thing. Like Shark Tank. Right. Was oh, in okay. there like the real estate flipping shows like that? That's that. Those are business. I didn't know shows. that was a category. Yeah, now. pimp my cool. ride. Not a business. Show, not a business. As show. it turns out, mm. sort of though. In a way, that's what we do. I mean, like, yeah, that's, you gotta. It's that gotta that, that be, is our uh, job. If you talked about it, if it was like, let's see how much your car is worth afterwards. Then it's, that's then that's it's, true. You guys gave them no. away. That was the problem. We did. Yeah. We did actually give it best away. It was free. <laughs> it was a charity show. Best charity show. Yeah. So wait, what is, I want to, I want to talk about the, the, the state of the vehicle industry right now, the new car sales oh, business, yeah. because we, we were on a show five, six, five months ago, maybe four yeah, months ago. About that. And it's, it seems like the tide might be turning a little bit. To um, some degree is uh, we, it's always about to turn. Right. And it, it, it 
we keep hearing things are getting better. Uh, they're getting microchips. We're going to have inventory soon. And Porsche it, has wiring harnesses. It, it, oh my gosh, that's a whole that's a whole different thing. Yeah. I mean, I know like like Porsche. They did. And I heard him say like we don't want to bring this up because how do you bring up something wiring harnesses considering the horrors of war but yeah their wiring harnesses are made in Ukraine yeah and they were actually getting some out like right in the worst part of the war can you imagine that what? It's people working in a factory doing yeah. wiring harnesses while bombs are going off outside that's literally what they were doing yeah, it's, it's amazing crazy. I mean yeah. I gotta gotta hand it to the people of Ukraine for, did they oh, did they move the production somewhere else I think I don't know I don't exactly know. what's happening um but what a weird thing. Yeah. And then I, I just bought this, I know, this, I know we're getting off subject, I just it's bought okay. this yeah, candy, and I looked at it, and I bought it on Amazon, and it was from Ukraine as well. I'm like, how are they doing this out of a war? Anyway, Ukrainian I'm candy? Glad we, it was uh, a like, these fruit, kind of candy? They're like these fruit bars called uh, Bob something, Bob Snail. I'm doing a promo for, for Ukrainian fruit bars? fruit bars called Bob Snail. Are they delicious? They were is actually that, good. They're, that, like, they're just pure fruit, like smashed fruit. Oh, yeah. I yeah. actually really like those. Yeah, they, I, I don't like I eating a bunch of crap. that are called That's It or something. Yes, I love those. That's that's it, those that. things are like really good. I, th- it's I, just I, fruit I those all the time. smashed into a cube. That was the, it is. That's the last thing I ate last night. Yeah. Yeah, that's like a, they're they're good. Those are really good. They're really good. But we were talking about wiring harnesses in Ukraine. Well, and, oh, automotive shortages. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so a couple... Manufacturers, actually, maybe maybe you can talk about this. Um, Ford has announced this thing where you can buy EVs. You'll be able to buy EVs through website, right? Apparently. Well, what they're what they're working on is to make it a more simplified process for everybody, and you know that's it's the same thing everyone's been trying to do for a long time, and you know it, it's hard to do when it's like for an entire. Uh, you know, thousands of dealers that it's a negotiated price. So they're, they're trying to figure out how to do that. You know, we do it our own. So we already have that available. Ford's just trying to do it on one platform. Uh-huh. So it's... And what about the lease, bu- the lease uh, returns thing? So Tesla so, has started it where they, you, they let you buy a car or they let you lease a car. But if you leased it, you couldn't buy it out at the end. That's correct. And so now Ford, it seems, is trying to set it up with the EVs where you can't buy out the EV leases at the end. So that's where it's at right now. And that's just recently announced. And they're, you know, if you, if you look at a lot of, you know, a lot of companies are copying what Tesla's doing, obviously. Uh, you know, when they're worth a trillion bucks, they're getting everyone's attention. So they're going to follow them in some good ideas and some not good ideas. And they're going to adjust as things go on. So if that doesn't work out uh, for customers, they'll make an adjustment. But for right now, they want everything to go back uh, to the dealers and they're you know going to try to control the market somewhat uh interestingly it might be against uh, more inflation you know right now uh they're not fighting the dealers because they're selling cars too cheaply which is one thing that they would do for a while now they're on the dealers because they're selling them for too much right, right. And, and, and the markups and everything so that's what they're trying to get under control well the official but statement they can't price said fix. it was it was a quality control thing right we want to get the cars back so that we make sure that when they're when they go to the next owner that everything is good but at the same time i don't really buy it i i well, kind of i'm like I think they're just seeing people buying out their lease, driving up the road to CarMax and pocketing five grand difference. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, bothering them to any degree. As long as they're staying in another Ford, they're happy with it. You know, they, 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 don't, they don't care. They want people to, uh, to do well. I mean, look what they did with the GT. They didn't sell them through dealers and all the GT buyers. They keep them for two years, then, you know, make half a million or a million, mm-hmm. a million bucks on them. Uh, but the other thing that, you know, they're very concerned over it. And Ford is a lot more concerned than like a Tesla because they're just, you know, breaking ground and doing whatever they kind of want to do. Uh, but there's real concern over battery life and what is the wear and tear on a battery and if they're going to resell it, you know, how much battery life is going to be left and what's the value of that. Uh, so I know that that's a, that's a big concern and how they're going to recycle batteries uh, is another big one. And yeah. like at the plant that they're building in Tennessee, uh, that's coming with a whole battery recycling plant on site as well. So there's there's more to it, mm. but I think they're still trying to figure out what all that more to is. Yeah. I mean, my car is a pretty early car. I think um, it's in the first four or 500 Mach-E's built. It's yeah. a, we got, it was, I mean, it might've cool. been the first or second one that you guys sold. It was really early. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, I've had some software hiccups. I mean, yeah. it's been in for a bunch of software updates. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. the roof recall. There's the, uh, the, yeah. the battery voltage recall thing, which they're actually, I'm taking it in to, to handle everything at once. Yeah. Um, despite that, I, you know, I do love the car. Good. Um, you know, it's, it's a great car. It's never left me like stranded or anything. The yeah. hiccups I've had have always been small and stupid. And I knew as an early adopter for this type of car that I was going to have some hiccups. And yeah. and it it and I I've already told you like I'll probably get another one. Great. Um, and I love it. I I yeah. I love driving them. But when I first got the the Jag I Pace, oh yeah, oh my gosh, I just remember like a couple of times, like being a few miles away from the dealership, and all of a sudden it wouldn't go over five miles an hour. Oh, that oh could be God. a problem. And I like crawled back into the dealership. That's and a good all, looking car. It, yeah, it is. Do you, cool. you sell any of them? We're not getting any of them. Oh really? I've got five Jags in stock. Really? Maybe three. Wow. So the in, yeah, the inventory is an issue for Jag. Yeah, it's that's everywhere. interesting too because it's even, not like they have a whole bunch of new exciting product at the moment. Their their lineup is well, no, and they're going through been. the big transition to go pure EV by twenty twenty five. So they're holding the cards so pretty soon. close to the vest. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So it's going to be here any minute. Yeah. So production is, is going to Land Rover at the moment. Uh-huh. You know, and we're getting you know a few. Uh, SVRs in and you know yeah, but defenders are going out the door like crazy, oh, right? They're they're all on. Yeah, they seem everywhere. But we're just starting yeah, to get some everywhere. the new Range Rovers in. They're gorgeous. Oh, yeah, what Zach, a, had what a Zach went to the Range Rover launch. That yeah. thing oh, looks very very nice. They're very well it's, done. It's yeah. gorgeous. They, did the, the I Pace? I mean, that's been out for now what five years? Oh, now? Yeah. dude, did I they think I well drove the I Pace in twenty fifteen, maybe or sixteen. It was one of the earliest. It was early production. Yeah, it was early. I remember seeing it when it was a a concept that Ian did, and it looked like a crumple up piece of paper. It was, it was actually a really cool kind of origami cool kind of thing. Car. And it came out. Yeah, I, I agree. Kind of a weird crossover, something, you know, not quite normal, not a sedan, not a yeah, but SUV. It, it, it balanced that yeah. kind of techie with And it drove great. Yeah. I drove it for a few thousand miles, you know, yeah. just to kind of get used to what an EV drives like back then. And yeah. uh, I loved it. I thought it was very cool. Other than very when cool I'd car. break down occasionally. But, uh, <laughs> you know, those things happen. And, I, I will deal, as long as the car doesn't leave me stranded, if it does, if it has little hiccups once in a while, I don't give a shit. If it, it's little stuff and it, it's fine. But Last time I got stranded, a car was in a Ford GT. Really? <laughs> and I was on the freeway. And I was literally talking to my cousin Steve, who's our GM here at Porsche. And the tire popped. Oh, that's And later I'm like, I'm like talking to him. I'm like, just went over that, you know, those little bumps in the freeway. Uh-huh. And it must have just hit right. And I was like, dude, did you hear that? I was yeah. like on the phone with him. And uh, man, the entire tire a just current, a current blew GT out. Current yeah. a new one? Oh, on the freeway. Sucks. Oh, that did suck. Did you ruin the, did you wreck the carbon no, wheel too? No. Well, the, yeah, the wheel was wrecked. The wheel was wrecked? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. At least you know where to get one. Yeah. I was, I was able to get that another sucks. one. That sucks. Yeah. There's anything happens in one of those, you're calling a tow truck. There's no, yeah, there was, no there was nothing that. to do, Yeah, and, but I didn't want to, I couldn't leave it by itself either. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. who is, who is, uh, who's getting, who's getting you product the best right now? Who's, who's actually running the most cars to the showrooms and. Uh, it's, it's, it's nowhere yet. Really? Um, every place in the world seems to have their own unique issues going on. So like all the Japanese manufacturers, they're probably the, the, the worst right now as far as getting inventory, although that will get better because of Shanghai, the shutdown because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously in Europe, it's the war. Uh, and here in America, it's, you know, it's still getting chips and they're still looking like well into next year of getting supplies of chips. Uh, Volvo just announced that they're, Somehow getting a supply of microchips and of all the franchises, we do have eBay. a few Volvos. Somehow. somehow, somehow, somehow. Do you guys know something I don't know? How, we, how <laughs> are they I'm getting just, chips? I could take a swing at it though. <laughs> like, well, there's, uh, a, there's a movie in this somewhere. eBay they, Motors has everything. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, and uh, you know they got Polestar, which were the mm-hmm. uh, uh, Polestar dealer for Los Angeles. Uh, but we've got less than ten percent of our normal inventory wow. right that's now. That's not. Much. No. Yeah, that's terrible. I mean, every OEM has so many suppliers, and a lot of them funnel toward the same. Yeah, you know, it's the same. Few. The so same folks the provide part. p- basic parts, bits, and pieces for a lot of different cars. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. the supply no, chain and, and, problem can start way up there. And uh, you know this, 
this upcoming year, we're going to have a shortage of used cars again. Yeah. Because there's no lease returns that are going to be happening for three years. So if you think about the used car shortage, it's going to be going on. Oh, for it's going to roll. Yeah. So if, you're, if your new car sales are way down, then you then you're not going to have. Le- yeah, that's true. So normally we'd be getting some lease returns from you know 2020 right now, not a huge amount, but next year. Nothing. Oh, so there's going to be a a serious shortage of nearly new, you know, recent model used cars for the next who knows how many years. Wow. At least three years. So if someone wants, if someone's like considering a new car, I want to buy a new car in the next two years. Yes. How far ahead of that do I need to get? It depends on the manufacturer. If they're overseas and you want to, you actually have to talk. And and a lot of times we don't even know, but I'd give it a good, you know, depending on the franchise, eight or nine months overseas at least. I mean, if you want to plan something out and make sure you're going to get it in time. Yeah. um, And it's, it's about ordering cars today. I mean, a, a lot of people are, uh, you know, Americans typically like to buy it right this minute, not in an hour, but right now and want to drive it and take it home. Yeah. Um, but I, now I beat we're the getting shit to out of my father for that. It's a te- it was a terrible trait of his <laughs> to go even on something expensive like a Porsche. Go, yeah, that one, and want to do it. I was like, you know, you can pick things, right? <laughs> but in Europe, they don't do that. In Europe, yeah. they have smaller dealerships. That's right. They'll yep. have one or two examples of each car, and then you sit down and you order the car you want. We don't yeah, have that very kind of patience patient. Here. Yeah, we, we we absolutely don't. And right now, people are being forced to be patient. I don't think they always will be. Uh, but it's about ordering. You know, Someone uh, now we're going to get some. Yeah, probably towards, you know, I said this last year, though. You know, we're going to get <laughs> some towards the end of the year, and starting in next year, it should start. You know, getting out of this. But I said the exact same thing last year. But but this year for sure. Yeah. Uh, Someone asked a question that is very much related to this. Yeah. They said, um, "Do you think because people are going to have to order their cars, are, is that going to increase their color and option variety versus what you guys used to stock? Like now that they're I forced that to order stuff, is that going to help people kind of branch out? I think absolutely yes. And what is exciting and encouraging to me is I'm seeing a rebirth in colors. Yes. And uh, it, it, it was kind of so funny. So tired of gray. So tired uh, of gray I'm and every shade gray. of gray. Everything from white to black and yeah. everything in the middle. It just, ah, it's so boring. Um, yeah, I haven't driven a, a black, gray, or white car in years now. I just won't do it. Uh, But that's exactly right. So people are ordering unique things and they're also realizing that, you know what? Colors have better resale values. Mm -hmm. And when people are shopping, that's what, you know, stands out. And when you're at every shade of gray, it's a price, you know, comparison. When you've got something unique, then people are willing to, you know, to pay for something unique. So as a used a car, I advise people to get a, get a good color. Yeah. You know? A buddy of mine had a, had a black Mercedes SL from four or five years ago, and he got T-boned at a light. He's oh. fine. He needs a new car. He wants another Mercedes SL. And he was just complaining to me. He wants the red. And he's like, hmm. did you know there's like a $10,000 premium for red <laughs> oh, on this car? And there is. Because so many of them were black, white, or silver. Right. right. So, and, and is that it, new or is that? No, this the, is this is like five, six years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. not new. I yeah. think there is a, a charge for red, but it's yeah. not ten grand. No. But to, on, on the used end of it, the, there's a huge premium for oh, red. Yeah. Well, they just did that study, and I think yellows they showed held their value well. Yeah, which, which is really I think interesting. There, right? There's very few like common car. Or I should, yeah. When I say common, you know, everyday cars that are uh, I shouldn't even use imagine, that term. No, no. That but are imagine, yellow, but you know what I'm imagine saying. Imagine like a like a Mercedes like. E class <laughs> with a V six in, in yellow. yellow. You know, oh, like yeah, like, no, it doesn't work. It's like wow, you really went for it here. Yeah. <laughs> but the yellows, purples, and I think oranges yeah. and greens were like the top. Not not greens because I think the more, but those are the top resale and values. blue, like nice blues, like yeah, the bright blues, the bright, the bright blues. Really, oh, I love that. See, I love color. So we like when the you know one of the things I. Uh, really try to do is like with Aston Martin when the DBX came out and we got our first orders was really order one of a kind things. I yeah. mean, so we ordered, I mean, amazing mats. Like there's this like gold pearl mat. that's just, it, it, I can't even describe it. And, uh, it looks purples, like a brick of gold. Yes. Yeah, purples yeah. and pinks and, um, wild blues and matte colors and everything. 
Have you been all talking those... to Nathan and the press fleet? Because he orders I the press. Nathan. He orders the press fleet. You know, I've known like Nathan. That. You know, Nathan used to be our PR guy. I know. Yeah, yeah. I love Nathan. Nathan, Nathan he orders it. the he got... Aston press cars, and they're like nuclear waste. Oh, orange, but they're so and... rad. No, they're awesome. But he ordered the same color as cool. my demo. He yeah. got a, he got the purple, the violet, <laughs> and it was like, and he got so much shit for that. Oh, it's cool. And then everybody ended up loving that car. But you got to have something that stands out in the press fleet, right? Yeah. But the thing is, that's we sold out of all of the like wild builds that we did and then the normal not when I say normal stuff I mean they're still gorgeous the don't get me wrong the but strange. we got the whites and the blacks that, that were left over now we got the colors coming back when again you, when so colors definitely that's like a new you know, I think that's our new fad going forward not fad but you know that's that's the new trend is color again is, is that a, an effect where when someone comes on walks onto the lot and they see you have five blacks and, and five whites and five grays, they go, well, I guess this is what's popular. There's a lot of them, so they pick one. Whereas when they have the tablet or whatever with all the colors in front of them, they're more directing their own interests. Do you feel like it's that or? You know, um, it's a good question. I'd have a to, convenience it, it, thing where they walk on the lot, it, they need a car now, but and they it, go, all right, well, gray's inoffensive. But we'd always laugh because they, I mean, this was literally what I'd see a hundred times. So we'd come in and go, oh my God, God, that's gorgeous. I love that. Do you have it in black? You know, I'm like, jeez, oh, really? Like, but you, but you just told me how much you love that. But yeah. it, I think people have been like shy about it. You know, these like, Monet people paintings. People look at their they, they look at their neighbors too much. You know, and what, what yeah. everyone else is doing. I like to stand out or do something a little different than everybody else. But I think that's again, it, it's now becoming more of a trend that color is being acceptable again. And I never really heard the term uh, German rainbow before, but uh, very apropos for the grays. Yeah, yeah. You know, because everything... German rainbow is like 10 different shades of gray. Exactly. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that was, I got a customer at the shop who got who recently got a paint to sample GT3, and it's silver. Like, it might be, it might just be like... Why? I don't... I mean, yeah, but I, that's if you want a silver GT3, fine, but like, it's like, this one has like... It's like well, this silver and not this silver. It's like wow, you paid twelve grand for for silver. Huh? For I don't okay that I, that I don't get. But that's what I love about Porsche is they are yeah. definitely not the German rainbow. I mean, look at what's behind us now. Well, they'll let you do and whatever. The, oh, yeah. that's I mean, I went back to Germany and uh, just 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 a few months ago as well, and I got to visit their uh, you know paint to sample uh, that's division. That's cool, isn't it? Oh, it was the. Best. Did you see the 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 printing that they're doing, like the laser printing oh, yeah. on the cars, where they'll print they'll they'll laser paint a livery onto the car, and it can look like stickers, it can look like digital dirt, it Whoa. can look like tire treads. I didn't see the you digital can write dirt stuff on it. You can. Do, they had a car that was like a sample that had a bunch of weird stuff going on. on so it, it turns oh, your car cool. into a piece of paper. Like you, instead of vinyl wrapping a car and printing the vinyl, it just prints it's, it. Pr it's on the, the paint. Wow. Yeah, it's on the paint. That's cool. It, yeah, it's it is. really expensive. It's but it's, oh, it can only, yeah. The first thing you walk in and there's like, oh yeah, we we found this uh, color from the dye in money, <laughs> and it's it's a hundred thousand dollar euro paint job. Yeah, I'm like, right. no shit. And they're like, okay, this interior, yeah, if you do the full leather in, inside and everything, yeah, it's about 60 grand. So I'm like, yeah. so 160 grand just to do the upgrades on, yeah. your, on what are, yeah. but you got to love that too. Well, you, I mean, for those that can afford it, that is really are, special. Yeah, it's the same kind of people I run into at yeah. shows where they do it just because it can be done. Absolutely. You know, and, be, you know, it, and they're like, it's hard to be unique my, these days. My right. window stickers. You have an eight hundred thousand dollar GT three. Like, like, what did you do? Like everything, everything, like, <laughs> every box to check. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta hand it to Porsche. They really got every box you could pop. Yeah. When you can get, you know, leather uh, on the air conditioning vents, yeah. you, you know that that's real. Well, that and I, it, yeah. I just <laughs> sat down with my father because I was giving him shit for so many years for walking onto the lot and and going, yeah, that one. And I said, Dad. Let's let's build you one, and then you get what you want. You're yeah. not in a rush. We've got three months. Who cares? Let's let's just build it. Yeah. So we went. We said it took an hour and a half to build a Cayenne. Right. And yeah. And, there and he started with a car that had a the base price of eighty four grand Cayenne hybrid, and paint a sample good wood green Ooh. brown and it's great color Ooh. you know brown interior and then you know individualized options nothing insane. The kind of stuff you'd want. Right. You know, adaptive crews and LED headlights and, and air suspension and stuff like that. And it ends up being like $130,000. And he goes, how did I just add 54 <laughs> grand? He added another car, car to your car. was already supposed to be really nice. And I go, well, there's not only is it, the, do these options cost money, but the fact that you can do this 
is totally unique, you know, even in the world of high-end cars. Most most manufacturers don't let you pick and choose individual options like that anymore. It, 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 quite the opposite. Now they're really pushing, you know, towards commoditization and making things more simple and yeah. less build, uh, uh, you know, uh, complexity. Everything is about you know, reducing complexity. And I love Porsche because they, they couldn't care less about that. It's like, we want to make it as complicated as possible, but that's their problem. Order whatever the heck you want. And that's why I love Porsche. Nobody can do it like, I mean, even like, like land, like on the new Range Rover, for instance, can you get as specific as you can in even a basic Porsche in terms of the personalization? I don't think you can. I don't know any other manufacturer that that does it. Now, you can go to Aston Martin and Rolls and and those. And of course, when you get to the the Uber exotics, they'll do whatever you want. They'll build your own car for you if you want to. Uh, So it's not that you can. In fact, that's... You know that's that's how they make a lot of their dough is yeah, just uh, that's you know, where the it. margins are but, for those but types with of cars. Porsche, it's like with with a car you can drive every day. You can have it exactly the way that you want, and yeah. it's uh, yeah. I don't know any other manufacturer that does it quite the same way. Yeah, that you could personalize a, a four cylinder Boxster yeah. or a Macan. You know, you could get a you could you could get a four cylinder <laughs> two liter Macan up to one hundred twenty five grand if you really Absolutely. if you really wanted to, Paint which is really interesting. Thing, yeah, yeah, yeah true. you could. I mean, you could do it if you if that's your thing. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't, there's got to be somebody out there that's going to do something like that. You guys get any Valkyries in? Um, we have a, a customer that's been trying to get one. And he's still working on it, so we'll see. We haven't, you know, we haven't gotten an order in yet. I, I, I we've went, got one guy like because they've been sold out for the last couple of years. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought they were really. I thought they were trying to get people. I thought they were trying to finish yeah. out the orders. Well, they were for a maybe minute. Maybe for the race then, cars. Maybe the maybe the road cars are sold out, and they're trying to get people in the race ones. The mm, well, the the road cars and the the convertible one, whatever they call it, the spider. Yeah, those, those are oversold. Those are, but the AMR Pro, which is the track only one that you need like a team to run. I think they were trying to get a they, few they, more people they, to round those out. Maybe I haven't. Yeah. I haven't heard that. But yeah, they went from oh shit, what are we going to do? To no, I'm yeah. sorry, you can't What's have one. What's the next four million dollar car we can yeah. build? I don't. I mean, I, it's crazy that they're actually. Have you seen one of these things in person? Oh yeah, it's batshit. I've I've gotten inside of it. Yeah, and I, you know, you drive like this. It's the weirdest. <laughs> I am putting my feet above feet my head. Your feet, are, your feet are at eye level, basically. It, 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 it's it's lying down. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm not a race car driver or anything. I can't. You know, I, I can't even. Yeah. picture. It's not graceful. No. I went for a ride in it in the. In oh, the that's cool. The it was deeply, deeply terrifying. That's and what it looks like. They're incredibly irresponsible for selling this to people. <laughs> they should not be selling this well, to like people. Well, like the customer we have that wants one is a professional race car driver. I hope so. I would feel good about that, but I wouldn't drive that thing. It's, it was so I mean, I, I might so have run gnarly. Maybe one laugh. But yeah. You know, well, not, no, I, well, this guy, <laughs> this Andy Prio ran a 118 at Laguna with me in the car. <sighs> oh, jeez. <laughs> on the middle power setting. And he said there's eight more seconds in it at full power and fresh tires and no passenger. So it freaked you out. It I can't even imagine out. what. What it would do it to me. It freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> it was, I got out of the car and went, nope, not even with all the money. I don't know what I would do with this. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so, it's so crazy. Those guys that can drive, I mean, that's an amazing skill. Oh, yeah. Well, like, guy, how have I been driving like, my whole life and still feel like a complete idiot when I sit next to one of these guys, right? They're, it's, they have a different, they're wired differently and they have a lot of practice. Yeah. 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 And then the arrow. Once the arrow's involved, that's a whole different skill set. Yeah. Yeah. And they have no fear. That's, yeah. that's the other thing. I, I, well, I don't even I think kids, this dude was fear. pushing. I mean, I don't think yeah. he was Not pushing at all. Eight seconds left on he the said, clock. Eight wow. seconds that is, is a lot. That's a lot. Laguna. That's a huge number of seconds. That's yeah. that's on the table. He's like, Yeah. Yeah, Eight more seconds. He was, and he, and they had to give so, me like a wet towel and a water. He was like, Yeah. So is that the most frightening thing you've been in? In terms of pure speed, yes, that's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I've right been on. in things that were like dangerous, yes, and exactly. I sh- had no business being driven at pace. <laughs> You're and young so and I've been stupid. Like I, we yeah. should have been scared. We just yeah, weren't because yeah. we were no, too dumb. This was just like this was the only time I've ever been in a car where I was like, I might throw up. Wow! Yeah, I was like the, after the in the. Ooh, I got to get like, me a ride in one of these because yeah. you're you know you got in it. It's in a you're in a coffin. It is, and you're, you're literally shoulder to shoulder, right? You're forget like, shoulder to shoulder. I had I had to hold my shoulder like this so he could steer, <laughs> and in the left hand corners he was steering one handed. No shit. Yeah, because I was like in the way, and then wow. and then the Aston guys um, said, you know, we could make it faster, except it has to carry humans. That was that's the holdback. 
<laughs> it would be faster. And well, I go, yeah, I cars so. carry humans. Yeah, That's yeah, what that, they're that is for. Sort of the purpose. Otherwise, yeah. you built an RC car yeah, and there's, a there's giant no point. multi-million dollar remote controlled car. That, <laughs> Imagine that, spending $5 million and just watching it go around from the side the of the Robo, track. There was the Robo <laughs> Race series <laughs> that kind of fizzled after two years or whatever. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not that, that would, it will what's, return. What's interesting about that? I don't, yeah? know. I don't know. Watching them crash. That, that's really it. But not well, even. At least nobody's getting hurt. So yeah, that's good. True. Yeah. True. Well, okay. So have you seen anyone else's projects? No. Are they all secret? Is that the thing? They just... uh, so there is a, a, a Instagram page where people are kind of posting kind uh-huh. of what they're doing. I haven't looked at it too carefully, but they're more focused on like little details right. rather than giving away the whole car. So we're doing the same thing. I'm like kind of covering up some of the paint job and everything because, you know, we got to have that big reveal at Pebble. Are there, is there a specific yeah. uh, challenge? Do they say you have to start with a car from 71 to 75 or no, anything? You it's just completely bring, open. Run what you brung. Yep. And I kind of appreciate that. Again, they have, you know, rules for the scoring, but you whatever. can do whatever you want. Yeah. So we, we, we play to ourselves and doing what we think is going to be fun because what we're doing is, like I said, not a proper restoration, just like last year was not a proper restoration. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's more fun this what way. Was the, what and was the winning car last year? Was it a proper restoration? No, they mm. did a, a, a little modification as well and did like if it was going to be an RS. So it was oh, like, okay. a, like a, um, uh, not a, not a replica, but what do you call it? Uh, like a, tribute. a tribute. Yeah, excuse me. Huh? So, Zach, it like a, the, there it is. Oh, that was last year's? It, it, by the way, I can't, looks, can't take anything away it from it. Like it was a, beautiful. It's a, a G-body car. Uh, from Porsche Ontario, I, yeah, Ontario, California, yeah, here, they, oh, right, oh, right up the corner. They did, they did a great job. I, I, I mean, can't it looks, take it out. looks nice, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like something that's like mind blowing. So, what they took the two point seven RS formula and applied it to a G body car. From basically. what I understand, yes, well, it looks nice. Black car, you know, Fuchs wheels, ducktail spoiler. Yep, and then, and then you got a, a nine six four that just looks like a very clean nine six four. Yeah. Well, they yeah, did, I, the, I mean, they did it as a restoration. I from these folks. This is, yeah. honestly, uh, these regionals are boring. Well. There's a 964 Targa. That's, so, so that's from, boring. So from what I understand, this year they did give some points for creativity. Yeah. So they added um, a little bit more flavor to it, hopefully, so it's not just, you know, straight. But we'll see. We'll see what uh, what others come up with. What, what is your safari experience? Have you driven safari Porsches before or owned mm. them or any of that? Very little, Ooh. almost none. So you're gonna go take this to the dirt. And it's super fun. Experience it a little bit. It's really uh, yeah, the entire I, thing. So there's a couple of uh, nice trails up in here in Santa Clarita. Uh, also, my my sister and, and their family live on a ranch uh, where we have buffalo and things like that. So oh, cool. I, I kind of have this fantasy. I know it's kind of weird about driving uh, driving this buffalo. thing up with a buffalo. And yeah, I don't know if I want to herd the buffalo. I don't know if you've heard, but they're not cows. They don't exactly <laughs> they, take kindly right. to to humans in their area. You know. And they <laughs> people trying to go up in Yellowstone Fair. and pet them. That yeah, is, they might that hurt, is yeah. not what you want to do with a, with a bison. That's no. why you do the exoskeleton on the, uh, yes, on the Targa. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, it's fast enough to run away from them. So, so that's good. Well, there's, a, there's a million good trails for that car. Oh yeah. Here. And you've got, you've got dry lake beds. You got yep. a mirage and, and all that kind of stuff. And well, let's and go. You tell me where to go. I could draw you a map. Oh, you don't, you, I, I can't send, go I with you. We can't go together. Just, just no, we can. take You're, off. We can. We could go, definitely you'd go do your thing. No. Do that. <laughs> I don't have my safari anymore. I sold it. Like, well, well there, there's another one. There's, 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 there's ones one. out there. There's, there's yours. We'll just take yours. What, what if I, what if I found another one for you? We'll I have. You know what? Actually, I have coming yeah. uh, soon. The, the Bronco Raptor. Oh, it's going to be so that would rad. Be, that would be a good one. Or yes. when, uh, when the Porsche Baja 911 is finally unveiled. Oh, yeah. Da- 911 a, Dakar. Do a pairing. Uh, I, I've, I saw, got, I've got my, my Bronco Raptor 2 coming. Do you? Oh, yeah. I saw, you, you know that. what I saw uh, a couple weeks ago? I saw the 911 Dakar prototype. You did? Camo you? in Los Angeles, in Venice. You, you did? Yeah. It was with a GT3 RS prototype wow. with sensors all over it and black camo stuff. Driving through right by my house. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no official word on. There on, isn't, on those. but I may have heard some things from some people that there is going to be a 992 generation safari style uh, car with a 
not like crazy well, knobbies that or anything, cool? but with some extra ground yeah. clearance. It's and like an inch or two. The, the spy yeah. shots from, I think, Germany that the people have posted, it's like one or two inches yeah. too tall. Yeah. Well, cool. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. Whatever you say, I, I don't know anything. I, don't, okay. know, but I don't know about <laughs> these All I things. know is that I saw the prototype. <laughs> Whatever you saw, I'm sure it's going to be really cool. I saw a prototype. <laughs> what fun. do you think about that? Right, what, do you th- what do you think you the also, market would be on something like that? How many like should that? Bill order? That's what, <laughs> yes. that's what he's asking. If, if what you're saying is accurate, what, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Three or four allocations a month. <laughs> be good. Yeah, we'd no, be doing I, all right. I, I could, I would see people buying those right? for sure. I, I think so too. Even just to like commute in. Uh, that singer that that they did was pretty mm-hmm. amazing, and that got uh, they got shut well, down pretty that, quick. It seemed like they had to take the letters and stuff off it. Yeah, yeah Porsche Porsche's not happy when singer writes. Yeah, Porsche they they on didn't. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't like that too. There's much. a whole thing, you know. If, if you follow them on Instagram, they've they've now got. A whole disclaimer they've got to put in every one oh, of their, really? yeah, and every oh, one of their posts. Same yeah. thing with um, you know, there's some companies out there that modify and customize Rolex watches, and when they put on their Instagram, they have to put a whole thing that's like the client gave us their own personal timepiece to customize, and we're not affiliated with Rolex. Oh yeah, because Rolex is really yeah, tight about stuff. I never heard that before. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, wow. I follow a bunch of these different Instagrams, and they've got a real cut and paste. They've got a what do they do to here. customize a, a Rolex? They'll skeletonize the dial. Uh, Ooh, they'll change cool. the colors of stuff. They'll. There's some of them are pretty neat. Oh, yeah, I'll check that and out. They're expensive. Of course they are. I mean, everything's of course they are. Now. But they they do some neat stuff. Yeah, they they you know for people with all the money in the world. Yeah, Spike okay, Lee's got a cool custom one that's like the New York the 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 Knicks colors. Oh, that's cool. Okay, like I want to check that out. Blue. Yeah, that's they do, fun. They do some cool stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. your it's your vibe. Yeah, totally, it's definitely your. Although vibe. Although I'm not like a big Rolex guy, but no, do, but like make, the yeah. customization of it is is your vibe. That's totally. what you're into. Yeah, I love that. Well, I think uh, that's our show. Where can we? Um, where can folks follow along at the? Is there a website for the Porsche Restoration Challenge? They they do have an Instagram uh, page. Zach, do you know what? Can you find what that Instagram is for? It's uh yeah, give me a second. Is it Porsche Resto Challenge or Porsche Restoration, something like that? And, and it, then uh, and they Porsche Santa the Clarita. At Pebble? Um, they will announce, I believe, the regional winner. Uh huh. And then there's four regions, and then they go to national, which usually well, was in Atlanta last oh, year. Okay, right. So we'll we'll see. Uh, Zach, do you have the Instagram? We, we, we didn't win. We got people's choice last year. That was that's fun. more important. That's what I said. That, well, rather, you know, yeah. that's what we, that's what we're yeah. very happy about. I'd rather have a car that, uh, everyone goes gaga over and we got tons of press. Oh my gosh. I think that's one of the biggest, uh, uh press releases we've ever had on, on that yeah, car. That's cool. And if, um, you're, if it's a marketing exercise, you really want the people's choice. Who cares oh, about absolutely. the trophy? Well, what's even more important is the car itself and having something that, you know, I'm in love with. When you it's still fun. have the car? We do. Is it's it downstairs. Over at the, uh, oh, it's here? Yeah. Oh, I, you know what's funny? I haven't even been downstairs You yet. haven't been downstairs? I, no, I just looked. I just looked. Oh, dude, we're going we were downstairs. We were setting up before. After the show, we're going to go downstairs. I'll, I'll take you down ins- there. It's get it, some Instagram love. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I got to say, it, uh, if you look up hashtag Porsche Restoration Challenge 22, 22, that's uh, it. That shows you all the different builds that are happening. And then and if you also just search Porsche Classic Restoration Challenge on Google, you can go to Porsche's site, which has a very long URL, and that will give you a little bit more information. Okay. Just cool. go to Porsche Santa Clarita. We, it's all good there. Well, I'll see you at, uh, <laughs> I'll see you at the quail all right, in friend. the morning, and then we'll, we'll roll over to the, uh, to the, the Porsche thing. Yeah, that'll be fun. Where is I it? Can't wait Do you know Pebble where Beach. in Pebble it is? No, not okay. yet. Okay, we'll, we'll figure, figure it out. I will, I'll, sh- I'll share the locations later. Thank you, Bo. Uh, right, beautiful buddy. showroom up here. Nice job. Thank you. Looking yeah. through the Thanks floor. Thanks for coming out. It's very cool. And I was saying t- before, it's a good place for cars and coffee because there are good roads nearby. Absolutely. And we've got a important. restaurant here. We got your you breakfast know, burrito is on point. That was a good Thank breakfast burrito. We love our burrito. breakfast burritos. Yeah. I'm crazy for those. You know how to feed people. We it's do. Important. It's very important. Food is very important. <laughs> Food and drink. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, that's our show, folks. We will see you guys uh, next week. We'll be back in the studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, enjoy your weekend. Bye.